hello students so today we will discuss about uh, four basic counting principles uh, the book that will uh, follow is uh, the introductory combinatorics by richard e bruelde so you don't have to worry even if you do not have this book uh, we will uh, follow the problems from uh, problems as well as the theory from this particular book so all sets under consideration in this topic will be finite sets so many of the olympiad problems or even uh, the counting problems that we come up in combinatorics involve these four basic principles so the first one is the addition and uh, addition principle which states that if a and b are two disjoint sets that is a intersection b is phi and their union is the set capital s then number of elements of s this symbol mod s is the number of elements of s is equal to number of elements of a plus number of elements of b okay so if a and b are two disjoint sets then the number of elements in their union is the sum of the number of elements in the individual sets okay so in diagram uh, you can see like this uh, this is the set s the universal set and a and b are two parts of the set s such that they are disjoint there is no common thing between a and b and if you take their union we get the whole set okay so such a collection of subsets of s is called a partition of s okay so we, we don't have to worry what is a partition here at this moment so as an example you can see if s is the set 1 2 3 8 9 10 and b is the set say 1 3 9 10 a is the set 2 8 okay then a and b uh, satisfy the conditions a intersection b is phi and a union b is s okay and if you observe number of elements of s is 6 and number of elements of b is 4 and number of elements of a is 2 so the sum of number of elements of a and number of elements of b is the number of elements of s okay so here the collection AB is called a partition of the set S. Okay. So let us have a look at a simple illustration here. This is uh, what we do in addition principle. Okay. So we have two sets A equal to ABC and B equal to XY. And these two sets are disjoint. Number of elements of A is 3. Number of elements of B is 2. And these two sets are disjoint set. A intersection B is Phi that is empty. Okay, then what is A union B? A union B will consist of the elements A, B, C, and X, Y. Okay, the elements of A and the elements of B. Okay, so all elements together will form the set A union B. Okay, and so how many elements are there in A union B? Number of elements in A union B is 3 from the set A. And two from the set B. There is nothing in common. So number of distinct elements in A union B is 3 plus 2 that is 5. And this is nothing but the addition principle of counting. Okay. So this can be extended to three sets, four sets, any number of sets. Okay. So this is what we will see here. For three sets, if, uh, if we have three sets A, B and C such that A intersection B is em empty, A intersection C is empty b intersection c is also empty okay so for three sets these three conditions should be satisfied so this these conditions are said to be um, we say that uh, a b c and are mutually disjoint okay so we pick up any two of them they are disjoint right so this is called mutually disjoint so only when they are mutually disjoint we can write number of elements of a union b union c as number of elements of a plus number of elements of b plus number of elements of c so in other words abc if abc are subsets of s such that a union b a intersection b is phi a intersection c is phi b intersection c is also phi and a union b union c is s then the number of elements of s is number of elements of a plus number of elements of b plus number of elements of c so the collection abc is called a partition of s okay so similarly for forward sets we can write let a a1 a2 a3 a4 be four subsets of s such that a1 intersection a2 is phi a1 intersection a3 is phi 
a one intersection a4 is phi okay so intersection of any two of them is phi okay so they are mutually disjoint okay they have to be mutually disjoint so the total number of elements in the union is sum of the number of elements in the un individual sets so in general if ai is a subset of s for every i equal to 1 to up to m okay so there are m subsets of s satisfying the condition that ai intersection aj is phi whenever i is not equal to j okay so this condition is the condition for mutual disjointness so when uh, say a1 intersection a2 is phi a1 intersection a3 is phi so whenever i and j are unequal ai intersection aj is phi okay and another thing union of i goes from 1 to m ai is s so this in previous lectures we have already seen what what does this mean it is the union of the sets a1 a2 up to am okay then the number of elements of s is number of elements of a plus number of elements of a2 plus up to number of elements of am okay so this is how in diagram it looks like for say five sets okay so this is the set a is a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 and each of these are um all these sets are mutually disjoint and their union is s okay so number of elements of s is the sum of the number of elements in the individual sets okay so this um, addition principle can also be stated in the following way if an object can be selected from one collection in p ways and uh, say uh, from a separate collection in q ways then the selection of one object chosen from either of the collections can be made in p plus q ways right so let us see one example to illustrate this suppose a student wants to take a, either a course of mathematics or a course of biology but not both okay so if there are four maths courses available and three biology courses available then the student can select a course in how many ways 4 plus 3 okay there are four options for mathematics so he can choose mathematics any one of uh, one out of those four he can choose by any one out of the three biology courses so total number of options that is available for him is 4 plus 3 okay so yeah so this is one example another example let's say there are five people in a locality who un understand english mm -hmm. and seven people who understand hindi and none of these people understand both okay so they you know, there is no not a single person in the locality who understands both then the number of people who understand either english or hindi is what directly 5 plus 7 that is 12 okay right so then we will come to the multiplication principle so if a set a has p elements and a set b has q elements then the number of elements in the set a cross b that is the cartesian product set of all ordered pairs that we had done in the earlier lectures is p into q okay and this is the statement for multiplication rule okay number of elements in the cartesian product is the product of the number of elements in the sets okay so in another way we can write it this way if a job can be done in p ways and for each way of doing this job there are q ways of doing another job okay then both the jobs can be simultaneously done in p into q ways simultaneously or together they can they can be done or successively they can be done in p into q ways okay say one example is this how many two digit numbers can be formed with the digits 2 4 6 and 8 so forming two digit numbers is like filling these two places okay from the tens place and the unit place so let us call the tens place as first place and the unit place as the second place so uh, we need to place objects in these places okay so in the first place we can place the objects in how many ways there are how many options available with us the digits 2 4 6 and 8 uh, this uh, we have to use these digits only okay so how many options are available with us only only four options are available with us so first place we can select in or we can put any of the digits 2 4 6 8 so first place can be filled in four ways and no matter what we place in the first place there are also four ways to fill up the second place okay so hence the total number of ways to fill up both places is 4 into 4 that is 16 okay this is the multiplication rule and it can be illustrated this way very simple illustration if we take first place as 2 then there are four options for the second place right if we take uh, first place as say 4 
then also there are four places uh, for four options for the second place okay if we take the first place as six then also there are uh, four options for the second place two four six eight okay so the numbers are 22 24 26 28 42 44 46 48 62 64 66 68 okay like that then if the first place is eight then also there are uh, there's four ways of filling up the second place okay so the numbers are again 82 84 86 88 so that way we can see the total number of uh, word uh, two digit numbers that can be formed with 2468 is 16 okay so there are 16 such numbers okay so let us have a look at one more illustration here so we can understand it better multiplication principle so let me just yeah so this is the multiplication principle so we have two sets say a b c and x y so to illustrate this uh, we begin with so we need to find out the number of elements in a cross b okay so a cross b the elements uh, look like ordered pairs so with a we will have x a comma x will be one element a comma y will be another element okay so this is what we have illustrated here so with a we will have two elements x and y so for each choice of the first place there are two choices of the second place right a comma x a comma y okay right then for the choice b of the second place there are again two choices for the uh, second place right for b for b in the first place there are two choices for the second place x and y bx comma by these are other two elements of a cross b and similarly for the choice c there are two ways of selecting the second place so cx comma cy these are the other two options for a cross b okay so ultimately what i have seen we have seen that the number of elements of a cross b is 2 plus 2 plus 2 equal to 3 into 2 okay so the first coordinate can be chosen in three ways for each choice of the first coordinate there are two choices for the second coordinate okay so the no total number of ways of selecting the ordered pairs is 3 into 2 that is 6 okay so let us have a look at this video again so two sets abc so a correspond a with x a with y b with x b with y c with x and c with y Okay, so that's how the number of elements of a cross b is 3 into 2 okay so this is an illustration for explaining the multiplication rule okay so this is exactly what we have done here right so the option so uh, another example a student has to take uh, two courses one in mathematics another in biology and there are four more maths courses four and three biology courses and then the student can choose a course combination in four into three ways okay so you observe the difference with the earlier problem the earlier problem uh, the student had to select one course out of mathematics and biology four mathematics and three biology so he had only seven options but here he needs to select two courses one from mathematics one from biology okay so four uh, options are there for maths courses for each choice of math math course there are three choices for the biology course okay so the student can choose a course in 4 into 3 that is 12 ways okay. so for maths if he chooses m1 course then he can choose b1 b2 b3 any any three of them uh, yeah, any one of the three okay if, if he chooses m2 then any one of this three so this is the illustration so this is how there are 12 options available okay uh, say another example the number of ways of selecting one man one woman one boy and one girl from five men, six women, two boys, and four girls is what? So one ma uh, man can be selected in five ways. So for each choice of the man, there are six choices for the woman. So five into six. For each choice of the man and woman, there are two choices for the boys. Okay, so that way, the continued multi multiplication principle. Right. So another principle is subtraction principle, which is quite simple. If A is a subset of S and A complement is the complement of A in S, then number of elements in the complement is number of elements in the set minus the number of elements in A. 
so number of elements in s means the number of elements in the universal set which with respect to which complement has been taken so if say s equal to 1 2 3 4 5 and a is the set 2 3 then a complement is the set 1 4 5 and you observe that number of elements in the complement is just the total number of elements minus the number of elements in a okay so let us see one problem related to that three digit numbers are formed with the digits 1 2 3 4 5 how many of these digits are not divisible by 5 okay so number of three digit numbers that can be formed is 5 into 5 into 5 we have already explained for the case of two digits so here for three digits uh, because the digits are already given 1 2 3 4 5 so there are five digits first place can be filled in five ways the second place can be filled in five ways the third place can also be filled in five ways so there are 125 total number of options so this is the number of elements of s what is s s is the set of all three digit numbers which are formed with the digits 1 2 3 4 5 okay so number of such numbers is the uh, number of such numbers which are divisible by 5 so now see if the numbers are divisible by 5 then the unit digit has to be 5 or 0 but 0 is not there in this option so the unit digit now of the number has to be 5 if it is divisible by 5 so how many numbers are there which are divisible by 5 the first place can be filled in 5 ways second place can be filled in 5 ways third place is already filled up using the digit 5 so there is only one option for the third place so total number of such numbers is 5 into 5 that is 25 so number of elements in the complement is 100 okay so there are 100 numbers which are not divisible by 25 yeah 5 okay right then the division principle you know, this is something which have which we have already done in the school level many times uh, so let s be a finite set and so we are stating it in a different way now using sets so let s be a finite set that is partitioned into k subsets okay such that each subset contains the same number of elements okay then the then k is equal to number of elements of s divided by number of elements in each subset okay so that's quite simple let me explain this one the principle has been used by students in maths classes since childhood okay so in our uh, say class 2 or 3 maybe we have done these things if the cost of 12 apples is 360 what is the cost of each apple 360 divided by 12 so exactly this is the multiplication uh, division rule okay say uh, you, you have 740 balls are placed into boxes with each box containing 10 balls then the number of boxes is what 740 divided by 10 so that is 74 okay so total 70, 740 balls are placed in boxes uh, where each box contains only 10 balls okay then the number of boxes is 740 divided by 10 that is 74 okay so that way so this is the division rule okay so let us see some problems uh, this is one problem which i had taken up uh, in the last class also uh, this was uh, if x uh, y z if you see the last video it's the exercise number 11 so if x y z belongs to minus 1 1 that means x and x y and z can be either minus 1 or 1 okay so how many distinct ordered triplets x y z can be formed so in the last video we had just uh, done this by list actually listing the elements but today we will do it just by the multiplication rule we don't need to list the elements we can just find it out to find the number of such ordered triplets by multiplication rule so the same question can also be written this way find the number of order triplets in the set s equal to set of x y z such that x y and z belongs to minus 1 1 so this is just an application of the multiplication principle so we are to find the number of ordered triplets that means we need to find the options for the first place we need to find the options for the second place and for the third place okay so for x there are how many options x can be either minus 1 or 1 for y again there are two options for z also there are two options so by multiplication rule number of order triplets will be 2 into 2 into 2 right so in exercise 11 we have already listed them so here i'll try to list it in a different way as part the multiplication rule see if x is minus 1 then there are two options for y right y can be minus 1 or y can be 1 if y is minus 1 then there are again two options for z right 
z is minus 1 z is 1 if y is 1 again there are two options for z okay so how many are there uh, so so this is one arrangement minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 okay this is one triplet another triplet is minus 1 minus 1 and 1 okay this is another triplet another triplet is minus 1 1 and minus 1 okay and another triplet is minus 1 1 and 1 okay so how many are there 1 2 3 4 4 triplets we have already got here again this is another triplet 1 minus 1 minus 1 another one is 1 minus 1 1 okay another one is 1 1 minus 1 and another one here is 1 1 1 okay so these are the eight uh, ordered triplets that we have already listed okay and this eight that uh, we have calculated without listing okay so this you need to understand both okay and both are important say how many distinct uh, ordered five tuples can be found five tuples means there are five coordinates here and the order is important okay so can be formed with the with xi xi belong to belonging to this set one two three four okay so the how many options can x1 take x1 can take four options x2 can be chosen in four ways x3 can be each of them can be chosen in four ways so total number of five tuples will be four into four into four into four okay so there can be repetition okay we have not mentioned anything about repetition so there can be repetition repetition is allowed so we may have five tuples with all entries equal to two okay that is also counted here right so number 14 is how many four digit numbers can be formed with the digits 0 1 2 up to 9 and how many of these begin with 7 how many of these end with 0 how many of these begin with 25 how many of these begin with 3 and end with 6 okay so let us see all of this so given uh, digits are 0 1 2 up to 9 so there are 10 digits in all so forming four digit numbers is equivalent to filling up these places okay so first place can be filled up in nine ways because zero cannot be placed in the first place second place can be filled up in 10 ways third place can be filled up in 10 ways okay and fourth place can be filled up in 10 ways so by multiplication rule the total number of four digit numbers is 9000 9 into 10 into 10 into 10 numbers beginning beginning with 7 will look like this 7 and then second place third place fourth place okay so second place can be filled with 10 ways third place can be filled in 10 ways fourth place can be filled in 10 ways so number of four digit numbers will be beginning with 7 will be 10 into 10 into 10 that is 1000 okay then numbers ending with 0 will look like this first place second place third place and then 0 so first place can be filled in 9 ways because 0 cannot be placed uh, second place can be filled in 10 ways third place can be filled in 10 ways so number of four digit numbers will be 9 into 10 into 10 okay. so numbers beginning with 25 they will look like this 2 5 then 2 blank spaces so these blank spaces can be filled up in 100 ways okay and then numbers beginning with 3 and ending with 6 so 3 then 2 blank spaces 6 so first blank space can be filled up in 10 ways second blank space can be filled up in another 10 ways so there are 100 such numbers okay now let us see another problem uh, which basically requires the things that we have done from our first lecture to the uh, to this lecture okay this is this problem came up in um, prmo 2018 okay but uh, it will also require something from the number theory that we have already done that rahul has already discussed with you congruence congruence some properties of congruence will be required yeah. so um, consider six digit numbers of the form a b c c b a okay so we are considering numbers of this type a b c c b a for example this number four two seven seven two four okay maybe one two three three two one okay so these are actually uh, like palindromic numbers these are called palindrome if you read read it from uh, this side to this side or you read it from this side to this side the number is same okay it's a palindrome so yeah so let me just write it's a palindrome, palindrome. Okay. 
right so billion rooms are words like or numbers like this one two three three two one if you read it from front bracket it, it appears same okay say madam m a d m this is a billion room okay right malayalam malayalam this is a palindrome okay so this is what we are seeing so these are palindromic numbers of six digits uh, how many of these numbers are divisible by seven okay you have to find how many of such numbers are divisible by seven okay so we need some divisibility concept here also so let us try simplifying the things we have already learned about congruences so we will try to simplify using congruences observe that if you expand this abc cba we can write it in this way this notation okay this is just the expansion that we have done in schools also uh, so this can be written so there are how many zeros 1 2 3 4 5 five zeros are there 1 2 3 4 5 five zeros then multiplied with a 1 followed with four zeros multiplied with b 1 followed with three zeros multiplied with c okay 1 followed with two zeros multiplied with c then one followed with one zero multiplied with b okay so this is the expanded form of this number now uh, if you add them up uh, this uh, like terms a is added with this a then uh, the term b is added with b then c is added with c okay like that so it is uh, one zero 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 one a plus one zero zero one zero b plus one one zero zero c Okay. Now we will see it is congruent to what modulo 7 okay because we are considering divisibility by 7 okay so for that what you have to do you have to divide this number 100001 by 7 and see what is the remainder okay so I have already done the division you do it yourself and try to show that uh, you divide this uh, 100001 by uh, 7 and get the remainder you will get 6 okay. So even if you don't get 6, you just let me know, then I can see whether I have done the mistake or not. So this is congruent to 6 and by properties of congruence, if A is congruent to B and C is congruent to D, then their product AC is congruent to BD. Okay, this is what we have done. 1000100001 is congruent to 6. So 1000001 into A is congruent to 6 into A. Then uh, you will see that this number is divisible by 7, 10001, 10010, this number is divisible by 7, so its remainder is 0, it is congruent to 0 mod 7, and 1100, it is congruent to 1 mod 7, okay. So ultimately 1100C is congruent to C. So, but uh, again 6 can be written as minus 1 congruent uh, modulo 7, because 6 minus minus 1 is 7, which is divisible by 7, okay. So 6 is same as minus 1. So this is ultimately congruent to C minus A modulo 7. Okay. So divisibility of ABC CBA by 7 is equivalent to divisibility of C minus A by 7. Okay. So now C and A are digits. So we are we just need to find out. Uh, so there are very few options for C and A. C and A are digits. So C and A can be 0, 1, 2, up to 9. Okay. A cannot be 0 because A is the first digit. We are considering six digit numbers, so A is non zero. Okay, so we just need to find all possible C and A so for which C divides, uh, 7 divides C minus A. So that is what you should keep on trying for this for this week. We will discuss this in the next uh, Saturday. Okay, so till then you keep on trying. One example I am already giving. Uh, if you take A as 7 as and C as zero. Then how many numbers you can form? Uh, you can form numbers like seven one zero zero one seven, seven two zero zero two seven, seven three zero zero three seven. Okay, how many such numbers you can form? If you take say uh, a equal to eight and c equal to one, then you can form numbers like eight uh, one one uh, one one eight. Okay, like that. So all those numbers will be divisible by seven. Okay, so your uh, home task is to try how many numbers are there and you list those numbers. Okay, list those numbers and try to find out how many how many are there. Okay, and try to use this multiplication rule. Okay, so it's not necessary to list all the numbers as also. So you can uh, use the multiplication rule and find out how many. Okay, we are interested in finding out how many such numbers are there. 
सो टिल नेक्स्ट वीक गुड बाय